My name is Cody Ballard, and today I want to welcome you to uh, another Madden 17 commentary. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some online gameplay as I talk about a couple of things that are going to uh, be changing on the YouTube channel. Uh, the reason for the change is I think that our channel has been out of alignment for a little bit, and I really want to work to basically get us more in alignment so that we're walking in one direction uh, towards one destination, not 14 directions towards one destination. So hopefully that makes sense. And because of that, we're going to be changing the name of the YouTube channel. We're going to switch over from just my name to Smart Man TV um, until uh, further notice. I may actually change it again. Uh, but for right now, it's going to be called Smart Madden TV. And the reason it's going to be called that is because uh, we're all about working smart. Uh, we're all about being wise and, and, and trying to basically execute uh, the, the best way. Uh, not, necessarily the, not necessarily the most difficult way, not necessarily the most whatever. We're trying to keep it simple and keep it effective. Um, for that reason, change the mission statement a little bit. And now we're going to be shifting into a new idea, this idea of preparation, opportunity, and execution. Now preparation basically is what the main role of our channel is going to be. We're going to be consistently trying to better prepare you um, for success. So giving you the right plays, giving you the right reads, giving you all of the tools you need to be successful in this game. And the second component of that is going to be uh, execution. Execution or excuse me, is going to be opportunity. Opportunity is basically uh, we're going to try to teach you how to seize opportunity when opportunity comes. So, uh, you know, you basically you can prepare for something, then you can have the event happen. And so uh, once the opportunity comes up, the problem is a lot of us miss opportunities. A lot of us don't take advantage of all of the opportunity we have sitting in front of us, especially in Madden. And uh, the reason for uh, the change here uh, is because I want us to start taking better advantage of the opportunities that come our way. And then the second, uh, the, the final component is execution. So not only are we going to teach you how to basically prepare before a game, we're also going to teach you how to notice opportunities, but lastly we're going to teach you how to actually execute, how to actually go get the job done, how to go get a win, how to get better at this game. This whole channel rides on this one idea that my belief is that by watching my videos you will be able to get more wins in Madden NFL 17. Be able to have more fun, be able to execute better, be able to be able to recognize opportunities together. All of those things come down to the bottom line is the goal of my YouTube channel is to basically help you get better at this game. Not because I know something that you don't, but because I'm studying people that you're not. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and, and, and I think that be able to synthesize information and, and all these things and hopefully we can teach you a little bit better how to play this game so that you have more success, less bad experiences, more good experiences. Because at the end of the day we're all trying to get better. We're all trying to log on and play and learn and analyze and critique and all these things. Um, so that's the mission of our channel and it's going to change a little bit. That means that we're going to change a little bit of the video content. Um, so from now on, almost every single video is going to have a specific purpose. It's going to have a specific mission. It's going to have a, a specific goal under the umbrella goal of trying to get you better at Madden. So everything that we do is going to hopefully point back to that mission and vision. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense to some of you guys. I'm sure it won't make sense to everyone, but uh, my hope is that the more that this goes on, the better we're going to be able to serve you here at Smart Man TV. Uh, so hopefully that makes some sense. I want to talk to you also a little bit about books. So I really would like to write some more books this year. Uh, I wrote a couple last year. I would like to write some uh, some more this year to add some more value to you. So uh, one of the other things that we're going to be incorporating is this idea of of, of next, like what's next, what's next for you in your stage uh, of your game, how do you, can you get better, because basically I see it as we're all climbing a mountain and we all have different uh, stages on that mountain, we're all trying to reach the same goal of being the best we can be, however the, the process to get there we're all at different levels, and so I think especially in Madden is a very easy example, uh, what we're going to try to accomplish here is we're basically going to try to kind of season that for you and, and, and basically give you a progressional system that you can 
hopefully take and comprehend a little bit and be able to understand uh, what we're trying to accomplish. So that's going to be coming to the channel soon. Um, but also one of the things I, I also think is important is that you are in charge of your development as a Madden player. Uh, and what I mean by that is basically I can give you all of the tools, but you're in charge of actually hitting the execution point. So I can give you the tools, I can provide you with the opportunities, but you are in charge of executing. And so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to structure this in the way that basically you're in charge of also, not only are you in charge of your uh, execution point, but I would like to make it so that you're in charge of what you're learning. So being able to open up for questions and being able to add value to, to you that way, I think is, an, is kind of another move uh, that our channel would like to take here is be able to basically let me step out of the driver's seat and allow you guys to step in and really kind of give you some feedback, give you some honest answers uh, to honest questions that's coming up. So maybe how to stop a certain play or how to, uh, you know, any kind of question, you know, whatever you want to know, like why do I uh, run my plays before I go online or whatever it may be. So hopefully that will add some value to you. But, but enough of that, I really just wanted to kind of cast some vision from, before you guys today. Um, and I also wanted to take your suggestions, you know, what, is, what do you guys think is the best, best type of videos to go about accomplishing our mission and vision? Uh, but basically at the end of the day, guys, the bottom line is we're all trying to get better at this game. And I think it's time that we stop uh, going, you know, just kind of taking it as it comes to us. And we started actually putting more structure behind it, not so that we're held down, but so that we're focused. Um, this idea of focus is something that uh, has really resonated with me in the last couple of months, trying to figure out, you know, what is it that we're trying to accomplish and how do we accomplish it? So casting the vision, learning why we do what we do, and then going and accomplishing it. I, I think that that is going to allow uh, us to have a lot more clarity on where we're going um, so that we're walking in the right direction. Uh, so hopefully that is helpful. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about this game, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the things I've been learning uh, and some of the things that are going to be bring, being brought up in future videos. So one of the things that is important to understand about Madden is it's, very, it's a very simple game. Uh, it, it, however, it's a very complex game. So it's kind of got a, a little bit of a beastness to it in the sense that basically there's a couple of different techniques that always work. And then there's also things that change year to year. So something that would change from year to year is effectiveness of certain, certain routes. Um, so for example, last season, the um, speed out route from the gun bunch and the gun tight was very effective. A lot of people ran it. I built a whole entire offense around it. I mean, it was just a really, 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 really good play. However, this season, it's not quite as effective. So, so there's other things now that, that have kind of taken over um, that role as effective. So, so now it's more of like um, little quick drags and, 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 and quick post routes or the five yard stock out routes or whatever it is. But the, the, the concept basically is you've got to figure out what works and why does it work. So um, part of the reason that for example, part of the reason that, 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 that the game works the way it is is because of the way the players move. Um, so if you never really pay attention, you, need to ask, you guys need to start paying attention to how the players move. The reasoning is because based on the way the players move, that's going to determine you what type of kind of concepts and routes are going to work best. So this game is kind of a really slow game, slow paced in my opinion. So post route works very well because you can user catch. User catching is very effective in this year's game, like high pass leads, those kind of things. Quick cutting plays are not uh, are not exactly that type of that type of model we want to look to this year. This year it's much more about you know big big catches, big you know big type of plays like this deep post to Floyd, you know bodying them up, those kind of things uh, is is now what kind of where we're shifting. But um, that doesn't mean that you just want to throw post routes all game. 
what it means is you want to understand, okay, this is one of the better effective plays in the game, post route. It's, it's one of the best routes. Why is it the best route? Because it cuts over. It basically cuts into a, an area of the field that is, is really tender for the defense. Now, here's the key, though, to developing an offense in this year's game. If you don't set it up, it will never work properly. So there's certain things that are also effective. For example, the five-yard quick out is one of the most effective routes this season because basically it's very hard to defend. Um, why? Because the, the way the players move, it, it's not bumpable because it's a five-yard route. That, 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 that's, a, that's kind of that next level of like why does things work. Looks like we got desynced or something. We'll get back into another one for you guys. But, but basically, it's like, why do things work? And then how do we execute? So it's like preparing is figuring out your why, casting your vision and mission. Opportunity is now figuring out, okay, what do we do? What do we do? How do we go about executing this thing? How do we go about finding ways to implement these strategies that we've learned? Those are, those are kind of that next level mentality. And I want you guys to look at this uh, a little bit more. So I want to go into a little bit more detail um, for you guys, and, and we'll talk more about this concept as the season progresses because I think it's going to continue to come up. But this kind of goes top down. So, for example, how would you choose what type of running back you would use? Um, so, in the in the years past, most of the time we would like to look for you know running backs that have really really good uh, agility and elusiveness. In my opinion, uh, I'm running with Bernard Robinson. He's got 93 agility, right? got one of the top agilities for the for the lower rated running backs but the problem is it doesn't really work that well okay he can't he don't we don't have that double juke move that we would do in Madden 16 we can't do it in Madden 17 as effectively the better moves are the spin moves the stiff arms and the trucks those are kind of your key moves right so and, and that's important to, to understand that guys because it changes everything the the players in themselves they really don't cut very well in this game it's not a crisp game it's more of like a flat line kind of almost laggy type of game um, and, I, and it's not taking shots of the game it's just trying to understand how does the game work what you know so so how does the game work what works why does it work and how can we implement it into our scheme you know those are kind of the bullet point type of deals and so what I hope you take away from that conversation is basically just like you've got to figure out how to best accomplish your mission. And so if your mission is to just look cute and have a couple of juke moves, go ahead, but you're not going to win football games. You're not going to win Madden games. Our mission here is to win games. Okay? Um, now we do that through winning the turnover battle. We do that through, you know, field goals, all these things. But but at the core of it, we, we, we try to figure out, try to align ourselves with what is, what is it that we can do to win games? How can we win games? That's the key. Um, that's the key to being successful in anything, but especially in this game. Because here at Strong Eye, he's running a, a post route with two streaks. Like that, that's not effective, okay? Yeah, he's got a post route, but he's got two streaks. User catching is good, but it's not like you can just throw one on one streaks up like you could last year. So the important point there to, to take away from that is basically this idea of like you you've got to you've got to kind of put it together as a it's got to kind of basically like I'm talking about with our YouTube channel same kind of thing you've got to align it where are we going basically what it comes down to is this statement I heard this a long time from someone but I thought it was it was so wise and I didn't even realize how wise it was when I heard it you have to begin with the end in mind. You have to begin in the end with mind. If you don't begin with the end in mind, you're going to walk out of alignment. You're going to get lost. Because what happens is, think about it like this way. If you're trying to travel somewhere and you're on a map and you've got, you put your directions in, you can't figure out where you're going until you know where you're, where you're trying to end up. Okay? You cannot figure out where you're going to go until you know where you're trying to end up. That's a big deal, okay, especially in this year's game. So, so where do I want to go? Well, I want to win games. So how am I going to do that? Well, i got to figure out what's effective. So in this game, I like the bunch formation because it gives me options, okay? It's not because it's cute. It's not because the three wide receivers over there make me look like a better player. It's not about looking good. It's about being great.
Okay, it's it's not about looking good. It's about being great. That is so important, guys, because what happens is the more and more reps you get, the better and better you become. It doesn't matter what you call. It really, truly doesn't. There's a couple of things. Like, you need good plays, but, but good plays are, are just that. They're good plays. Without good execution, what you have to have is you have to have good execution. Okay, so as you go through and try to put your systems together, know what I'm talking about is true and try to figure out that's the big picture principle. Now, what does that mean for me? How do I best go about accomplishing that? So, so, so it's, it's pretty simple, but it's very effective. And it's also very neglected. Not very many people do this because they want to run the best play. They want their receiver to do some kind of jaw-breaking route that's going to be effective and blah, blah, blah. And, it, it, guys, I'm just telling you, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work, okay? That's the bottom line. It does not work, okay? When you run what's effective, when you run what works, you can eventually get cute, okay? It's basically like this. You can't run the counter play if you haven't established the power play, okay? You cannot run the counter play if you haven't established the power play. The reason I say that, guys, is because a lot of times we're so busy trying to figure out how to run a good counter play that we don't actually have a power play. Without a power play, we're, we're, we're lost, okay? We can't navigate. It's that same kind of idea. We don't have directions, okay? The power play is our beginning point, okay? So hopefully, hopefully there's some nuggets in what I just said um, that you can kind of take and digest. But really what I want you to take away from that section of dialogue right there this is the one thing, if you guys want to write this down, this is the one thing that I want you to take away from that. You have to begin with the end in mind, and then you have to reverse engineer whatever it is you want to accomplish. So, for example, we want to accomplish winning more games. We want to accomplish getting more touchdowns, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, we want our score to be greater than our opponent's score. There's many ways that we can go about doing that, but at the end of the day, the biggest thing we can do is figure out how to score more points on offense and how to prevent them from scoring on defense. It's not about how many sacks we get. It's not about how many interceptions we get. It's not about how many tackles for loss we get. At the end of the day, it's about how many points does their team have versus how many points does my team have. Oftentimes, we start at the blitzes and we forget about the points. Okay? So that, hopefully, you guys see where I'm trying to go there. And I really, really think that can add some value to you uh, as you guys try to kind of navigate where you want to go uh, in this game. A lot of people, the more and more I get around this game, the more and more I watch good people play this game, the reason that there are, there are certain players that end up being good every year is normally because those certain players that are good every single year, like the problems and the serious mows and on and on, those players, they're not looking for cute plays. They're looking for effective plays. They're looking for plays that are basically going to set them up for success. And I hope, I really, really hope, guys, that you see what I'm saying. So as we look at this gameplay, um, you know, you can see that I'm running very simplistic plays, right? Like, but I'm not running like fullback power or any, you know, like I'm running, I'm running deep posts over the middle and I'm running out routes on the outside and, you know, I'm trying to get better at my reads. But, but, but at the bottom line is I'm taking what the defense gives me. So on example, when you walk to the line of scrimmage, normally you can tell, so I want to kind of get into some real life strategy now. So I was kind of big picture and I want to go really, really small and break down some of this gameplay for you. And any doll is just throwing all over the place right now. But here's what I wanted to show you. When you walk to the line of scrimmage, if you are looking at anything except the screen, you're wrong. Um, and also, if you're looking at anything except the defense, you're very wrong. Here's the bottom line. When you walk to the line of scrimmage, normally you're going to figure out everything you need to know within about five seconds. So basically what I want you to understand is this. This is, this is kind of the takeaway concept. And if, if you write this down, hopefully you can apply it to your game because I'm telling you, this is going to make you more effective. I don't care how many subscribers I have or if that I haven't won a tournament yet or haven't played or whatever it is. This is what I want you to hear. This is what I want you to hear, and I know I'm right. 
I know I'm right, okay? I don't always execute it best, but I know this statement holds true across the board. Here's the bottom line. When you spend the amount of time preparing, basically what your preparation comes down to, your preparation comes down to basically preparing you for a five to 10 second interaction with some kind of thing and what you're gonna do with that five to 10 seconds. Are you gonna execute during that opportunity or are you gonna miss your execution? So really what it comes down to is you spend hours preparing five seconds with the opportunity and five seconds executing. And the bottom line is you're playing for 10 seconds. You're playing for 10 seconds, okay? It's that, it's that simple. And I really, really hope you guys listen to what I just said because even though you know, maybe I don't have credibility or whatever it is. It doesn't matter my credibility. I'm telling you, I know that statement is true. Okay, I see it over and over again, not just in the NFL, not just in Madden, not just in whatever my life. I see it in everybody I interact with on a daily basis. Have they prepared? Are they executing the opportunities that they are given every single day? Every day we have that opportunity the question is, did we prepare, prepare for it enough in advance that we're going to see it and are we going to execute on the back end? That's the entire, the entire game right there. You prepare, you, have, you, you seize the opportunity, and you execute. Those three pillars are the entirety of everything that we're going to do at this channel. But I think, more importantly, those three pillars are the biggest way to improve in this game. Okay, I can give you plays after plays after plays after plays, but for example, third down or fourth down and 28, this guy is going to go for it. Now the point is, it's not making fun of the guy. What I'm trying to get you to see is there's a reason he's not going to win this game. It's not because he's got a bad scheme. It's not because he's got bad plays. It's not because he's got a bad team. It's not what it doesn't matter any of that stuff. What it basically comes down to is he's not executing the opportunities that are in front of him. Okay? So I want to I want to give you an example right here. So the, part of the reason that I come out in the same formation every time is because it gives me uh, a lot of basically simplicity on my end so that I can see the complexity on your end. So what this guy's been doing is he's been coming out in a lot of one high shells. What that tells me is normally it's either cover three or cover one. Now traditionally what you're going to get in three high is you're going to get some zone blitzing schemes. So when you face a cover three scheme, you want to attack the flats. Now when you face cover two schemes, so this, this is an example of cover two scheme right here. What I want to do is I want to attack the, either the deep verticals or the crossing patterns. So what I'm going to do here is basically I'm predicting that he's in man-to-man -man coverage and I'm going to try to run a man beater. And he's in man-to-man -man coverage and I'm going to hit my out route and we're going to get some decent yardage. Okay, now here's the deal. Another thing that's important to understand is blitz ability. What I mean by blitz ability is blitz ability is basically what, what, what can they do from a blitzing standpoint, right? So who can, who, who's going to come? Who's going to be able to come out of whatever formation they're coming out in? You know, so if they're coming out in 3-4, they can send two outside linebackers or they can send the middle backers. So you've got to basically be prepared. So this guy's in a 3-4. Okay, he's got two highs. This is probably going to be cover two. It's third down. Okay, so that's another thing that's important to note. It's third down, so I don't want to be risky here. I want to pick up the first down. So we're going to run basically a little levels concept, hit Antonio Brown on the little crosser. Okay, another reason to go no huddle is it gives you more time to access information at the line of scrimmage. So here, now we got a little bit of a man-to-man -man coverage look. So now we can maybe get our cornerback, our, 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 one of our better players here, Denard Robinson. Maybe we can get him isolated on with a linebacker. And we do, and we're gonna win that normally. Um, what you wanna also look for and I think this is essential too to kind of think about there's so many things that you want to identify but here's the big picture why why do we look at them before the snap because it gives us information about their defense and at the end of the day here's the big here's the takeaway from that from that dialogue 
you always know more about your offense than you do about your opponent's defense. Always. You know what you're going to call. You do not know what they're going to call. Okay? So when you walk to the line of scrimmage, you can be 99% sure that you know what they're going to call, but at the end of the day, you really don't know. It's a guess. Is it more important to look at your stuff that you know is going to happen? and you already know where it's going to go because you know the system, you know where they're going, or is it more important to look at where is your defense going? So don't, I would, I would really, really, oh, I thought he was going to run a slant. Dang it, that's terrible. That's why I don't like option routes. I think option routes are stupid because you can't, you can't predict anything. Like, what if the receiver guesses wrong? I mean, you're pretty much screwed. Like, what are you going to do? The reason I'm talking about this is because I've, I have seen far more people be more concerned with what their offense is doing than what the opponent's defense is doing. Okay? And I know that doesn't sound like a big deal or it seems like an obvious, well, duh. And I'm telling you, it's really important. Because what happens is we get so caught up in what our defense is doing that we miss what their offense is doing and they throw a dot on our face. Like what just happened right there. He's been running streaks all game. Oh, I, you know, I am so stubborn. I just want to run my blitz. Like that just happened to me. Um, and I'm, you know, so what I'm trying to get you to see though is basically, basically there's, there's basically decisions always. There are always decisions and you make decisions based on your preparation, the opportunity that's in front of you, and the execution that just happened. So whatever just happened should give you information. All you can gain is information from the past. You cannot gain information that hasn't happened yet. So you have facts and you have guesses. Um, and so what happens is, in this game, at least from what I see a lot of people do, is number one, they don't even look at the other team's call. They don't even look at their tendencies. More importantly though, than not even looking at it, they don't they don't really they don't really know what to do if it happens. So we spend our entire time in practice mode running plays against stuff that we pretty much should already be okay to be able to beat. Um, and so those are just some things. That was terrible. Um, but that's why I run one formation for the majority of the game. Like, I'll switch in and out. But I normally always come out in this one. Because I can do a lot of things from it. I can motion the tight end. I can put my tight end on hitch routes, which I wasn't able to do before. I mean, there's a long list of reasons why I use this formation. But at the end of the day, it's because it, it gives me more options. And really, that's all you can have. Oh my gosh, I threw that. Classic Madden. But um, I know it might be a very good example of it right now because I'm kind of fooling around trying to continue to work and get better. That's another thing that's important to kind of consider uh, as we go forward, guys, is that there's a tendency to, and I, I struggle with this a lot, there's a tendency to basically want to experiment in the middle of a game. You have to fight that. Um, especially, I mean, yeah, like if you're running a game to experiment, so like you can do that. But like, for example, if, if I was in a Madden tournament, right, and I was playing was really serious, really, really at the end of the day, all I wanted to do was I wanted to win the game, right? I didn't want to experiment. I didn't want to see all these things against a random play or whatever. I wanted to win the game. Then I would play much differently than I would in practice. But here's the bottom. Here's the problem. What happens is this. We're so busy training ourselves to play like, like experiment around and all that stuff. We're so busy training ourselves to do it because that's what we repeat over and over again. We repeat that over and over and over again. And when the time comes that we can't do that, we end up doing it by default, right? So it's important to kind of break yourself of those habits um, 
and I struggle with it. I fight it every. I fight it every snap, right? Every snap. Like I just want to go. The creative part of me wants to just run plays over, like just randomly, and just like kind of feel everything out. Like, does this work? Does this work? Does this work? Does this work? No. And I have to fight it because it's not effective in the moment. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if it works or not. Um, because I'm not even going to get the, a good, good, good view of it, right? Because I'm so busy trying to read the defense and all these. There's all list of reasons why. Uh, but the important thing is to take that principle from it. Because I hope you see what I'm trying to say. Um, because it, it really is important, guys. And there's certain things, there's just certain things that you just, you have to do your homework. You have to read. You have to study the game. You have to. Okay? You just do. And, and, and as much as I agree that this is a video game and it should just be enjoyed, the bottom line is you're not going to be good. And if you're not good, you're not going to enjoy it. Okay? At least that's my perception and that's what I built my channel around trying to give you the best tools to be as good as you can be. One of the things that's important to also see here, guys, um, and there's going to be a, there's a lot of things that I'm throwing at you today, and I understand that. And the, Part of the reason why I wanted to do the video is I wanted to kind of see, I wanted to kind of basically fill you guys in, um, but I also wanted to kind of cast some vision. And so there's a bunch of things that you could take away from today, but what I really want you to understand going forward is why I do what I do. I do what I do because I, it's not because I want to be the best commentator in the community. It's not because I want to, um, you know, look cool or, or be cool or whatever. It's because I want to, I want to win and I want to help people win. Bottom line. Bottom line. And so, um, you know, as we go forward, I think it's important for you guys to see that. Uh, I think it's important for you guys to be able to look at what I'm doing right now and say, yes, that's exactly why he does what he does. Because he wants to win. He wants to help us win. Period. And he does that through preparing us, giving us opportunities, and allowing us to execute. You know, those are, those are the pillars of today. And I want you to take that away because that's the important piece. And as we go forward, there's a reason why for everything. And hopefully you'll trust me enough that I don't even have to talk about it. But this is kind of the big picture, like this is why, and, uh, and we'll see what we can do. That was a terrible decision. And see, that's an easy example right there of running a play that you never run in that situation. Like normally I would run PA post. And I just didn't do it. And he's running single back ace. See, that's another thing. So like right now, my all of my information and data points should be coming from his offense. So he's going to audible. He's got gun ace twins. He can go corner route on the left. He can go streak. He's going to go streak right up the face. And he's going to beat me. And i got to figure out how to swat. i got to figure out how to swat. But I just kind of want you to see that. So, so when, you, so basically, what happens is you snap the ball, you come out, you look at his formation. So he's got I form to the left. So what he can do is he can go full back dive. He can go half back zone weak. He goes half back stretch. Okay. You know, half back stretch. He can get in from the end zone. So now, next time he comes out in that I formation, I've got to understand that. Okay, he's probably gonna probably gonna bring stretch my way. Um, you know, but, but part of the problem is, number one, I gave up a touchdown there. I can't give up touchdowns. I need to give up field goals, right? That's part of the big picture problem with my defense this game. If we were analyzing this, trying to make my defense better. And here's the key. Here's one other thing I want you to, I want to, I want to kind of ramble for a second, and then we're going to come back to that. I want to talk about the concept of making things better. So basically, this is uh, interesting, kind of going back to what we talked about in the beginning, um, that we're kind of all on this, we're all on this kind of upward path, at least hopefully, right? We're all, we've all got some kind of destination. Where, and so for this, we're trying to basically, on offense, we're trying to score more efficiently and effectively. On defense, we're trying to limit 
how much they score. Okay, and that's really the bottom line. Now that spread can always get better. And the reason I say that is this: if you think about it like this, so so let's just use this as an example. Um, if I win a game um, seven to eight, my offense was one point. My team was one point better than your team. Okay, the next game. If I win that game, seven to fourteen, my game was seven. My team was seven points better than your team, at least according to the scoreboard. Now, here's why I'm telling you this. At the end of the day, what I want to teach you is I want to increase the consistency of winning and decrease the losing. Pretty much, pretty much bottom line. So I want to increase the spread. So Basically, I want to be more efficient in my execution on day 90 than I was on day one. And I hope that makes sense because this is why I'm going to say it. Is because you can make everything better. There's always a way to make it better. Always. There's never, there's never a, a, a point at which you're like, I am the best. There's always mistakes. There's always things that you can improve on. Always, always things you can improve on. Okay? And what I want you to kind of take away from that dialogue is this. Look for areas to improve. One of the ways you can do this is by watching your own game film. I think that's grossly underestimated. We don't, for some reason, we in, as Madden community do not watch game film. And I don't know why we don't. NFL players do. Why wouldn't we? Like if we're really serious, if we're really serious about getting better, that would be an easy one. Just go put your webcam on or whatever you got. You know, it doesn't have to be f fancy because you're not going to put it on YouTube. But just go back and watch it and, and kind of pause the play and, and reverse engineer. So what did I want to accomplish on this play? Why did I call this play? And did I accomplish what I wanted to accomplish? Did I read the defense right? Did I make the right? Or all these questions that you can create for yourself. But basically create yourself an evaluation sheet. To try to understand, am I executing or not? You know that you know, and that's that's a big deal. Uh, I think that's a, I think that one can add you guys a lot of value. I really do. One of the things that's interesting too about this game, though, so go back to the, um, to go back to the defense, right? If I honestly looked at my playbook and evaluate, I've got to figure out why, why am I not, why am I not winning? on every play and then I got to reverse engineer how can I win on every play and then I got to go do it right pretty simple but it's also very hard um, pretty simple to talk about pretty hard to execute and that's the common thread through greatness at the end of the day if we keep it simple we can focus on a couple of different details um, so this game I made a terrible decision I've been experimenting way too much. That's why I'm losing 3 to 15. You know, it's not because my scheme, I'm telling you guys, it's not because your schemes aren't good enough. Sometimes that's the case. That's probably 5% of the cases. 5%. Normally the issue, and, and again, normally, normally the issue is that you're not executing your opportunities. Normally the issue is turnover, so you throw interceptions, or... So those are the main ones, interceptions, or um, you're not capitalizing when you get the opportunities that, that are given to you. So you're not, you know, you're either, you know, basically a couple, of, a couple of situations would be like if they, if you got a turnover and you didn't score in the red zone, that would be one. That would be an easy example of a situation where you didn't capitalize on an opportunity that you were given. Okay, so very, very simple, very, very easy to do. Okay, but, but, but at the end of the day, guys, it's, it, it comes back around. Why don't we do it? Because we're so busy focusing on the small things that don't matter that we miss the big things that do. Okay? And I want to try to, sh I want to try to basically shift that backwards. I want to focus on the big things that do matter, and I want to be able to let that kind of basically filter the other things that don't matter. And I hope that makes sense, and I hope you guys agree with what I want to do. 
because I love being able to, to pour into guys. Um, so, this concept of making it better comes back to basically evaluation and, um, and then clarity on what you're going to do now. So what's next? You know, how can I not do whatever it was that I did? How can I not do that? If it was wrong, or how can I keep doing that? Those are simple, 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 simple things. And the only reason I'm telling you guys this is because I want you to see how you have to make it simple, otherwise it's too complicated. So like this game is very simple. Bottom line, I did a very, very poor job of strategically calling my plays. I did a very poor job of strategically calling my plays, and I did a very poor job of game planning, like why am I doing what I'm doing? This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is a perfect example of what most people do. And I'm going to walk away with a loss because of it. Now, here's, here's the key, though. And I want to kind of spend some time on this, kind of close this out, because I'm probably going to take a loss in this game. This game is not about wins and losses. This is not to make myself feel good because I just lost. Okay? That's not, what this, that's not why I'm saying this. What I'm saying this for is it's about learning. Every play, you have, a, you have an opportunity to execute. And there's reasons why you might or might not, depending on your preparation. Okay? So why then, so the question is constantly ask yourself, why did this work? Why did this not work? How can I make it better next time? Those three questions should drive you. So this bunch formation, there's all these kinds of different things that he can do from this. But the main thing he's probably going to do is probably going to hit a crossing route or a quick pitch. And, 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 and as you can see here, boom, there's a quick toss. He's trying to run out the clock. Okay offensively and you want to do that every single snap evaluate that now what you want to really do though and this is this is kind of a high level low level type of deal so you could do that for every snap and you could come up with different things you can come up with different data points of what you need to improve on or what you need to not improve on but normally there's one or two things that will stick out there's there's one or two things that really if you just did those two things that would fix most of the other things that's what I want to call basically the takeaway Okay, so what I want you to do every game is every game that you play, if you're trying to win at least, if you're trying to win the game, I want you to go back every game and I want you to figure out what was the one thing that I could have, if I, if I did this one thing, the outcome might have been a little different. Okay, if you do that, that will grossly, you, that, will, that will massively improve your game. That will massively improve your game. The reason why it will improve your game is because it allows you now clarity on what do you need to focus on. So basically what it does is it gives you better directions. Okay? To go back to what we talked about in the beginning, oftentimes if we don't begin with the end in mind, we have no idea where we're going. Here's another problem though. If we only focus on the end goal of, wh of, of where we're going to end up, Sometimes we'll get there. Sometimes we won't go in the right direction, right? We, 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 we may have a faster, like, basically detour route open that we could take. It may not be the right way to go or the way we planned on going, but it's the right way based on the past. And when you look at your game film or when you kind of reflect, there's always one thing that you could have done better. Always. You could have either been on time better. You could have spent more time preparing. You, you know, there's always something. There's always one thing we can do. And as we kind of close today, I, I just want you guys to think about that. What is the one thing you can do to be better in Madden 16 or Madden 17? For a lot of you, I would assume it's going to be preparing better, right? Normally, we're okay with opportunity and execution. Where we normally struggle is pre preparation. We don't prepare enough. We don't prepare hard enough. Or we prepare one scheme and then change it in five days. We have a plan 
understand the plan, stick to the plan, now go execute it. Our plan is basically this, preparation. I want you to prepare one goal. Opportunity, I want you to look for ways that you can do that. Execution, I want you to do it. And then what I want you to do is take note of what you could have done better. What would have made it better? How can you make it better? You do those three things, you're not only is your game going to improve drastically, you're going to improve a lot as a player and you're going to be better every single time you step on the field. Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If this video added any value to you at all, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates for future content. If you have any questions, please let me know.